Hi there, this is Craig Beck from StopDrinkingExpert.com. Uh, welcome into today's video. We're going to talk about the effects of alcohol on the heart because there is a whole heap of fake news. Do I really want to be using the word fake news? I don't, that's, not, that's not an avenue I want to go down. Let's start again. Welcome to the video. We're going to talk about the effects of alcohol on the heart because there's a whole heap of misinformation out there. Let's talk about it today and get this sorted once and for all. Who wants to be the next to discover how to stop drinking without willpower? Visit StopDrinkingExpert.com and grab your free place on today's coaching session. So I'm making this video today because I've been doing this about 10 years now. And still to this day, I get people complaining to me, objecting, saying, why are you telling everyone to quit drinking when we all know that drinking in moderation is good for you? Uh, and some people even back that up by saying things like, uh, my, even my doctor told me this, drinking in moderation is good for the heart. And everyone's heard this story that uh, red wine is good for the heart. If you have a, a, a glass of red wine on an evening, the antioxidants into it are very good for you, very good for heart health. And it's been proven that... Uh, People who drink in moderation live longer than people who don't drink at all. So where do we start? Because this is a minefield. Right, look, it is true that your doctor may have said to you that drinking in moderation is good for you. And from their point of view, they are, they are entirely correct because they are quoting research. You know, they're, they're not just make, taking an opinion, they're, they're, they're quoting research. But there is a problem here, and that is that the research that says that people who drink in moderation live longer than those that don't is fundamentally flawed. It is broken because it wasn't done correctly. They did a huge survey where they asked people if they drink alcohol a lot, not at all, or, or in moderation. And then they, they followed these people through life, and they worked out that people who said that they drank in moderation, lived on average a few years longer than people who said they didn't drink at all. And so they leapt to the assumption, they leapt to the conclusion that drinking in moderation is better for you than not drinking at all. And it sounds logical, doesn't it? That sounds, yep, okay, sounds about right. The problem is they didn't ask people why they don't drink alcohol. And a lot of the people they asked were not drinking alcohol because they had underlying health conditions that were aggravated by alcohol. So they were going up to alcoholics who had damaged their bodies tremendously and had been forced by their doctor to quit drinking and saying, do you drink? And of course the answer was, no, I don't. And that was the end of the story. And all these people who said no because they had health problems brought on by alcohol, obviously are not healthy people. They're not in a good place. And their life expectancy is lower than someone drinking in moderation for that reason. So the whole research is flawed. Now, the red wine is good for your heart story is so powerful. And I want to share with you where it came from, because it doesn't come from any sound research. It actually comes from an off-the-cuff comment made on the evening news in the United States about 20 years ago now. There was some research done to try and find out why people who live in France have less heart disease than people who live in the United States. And it was poor quality research because at the end, they didn't have an answer. And so they did what no researcher should do. They made an assumption. They didn't have a clear answer from the research, so they said, well, it must be because French people drink more red wine than Americans. And it was a blind assumption. And this story ran one night on the evening news in the United States, I can't remember which channel, but at the end of the story, the news host went off script and he just raised a pretend glass to the camera and said, well, from this news anchor, it's a big thumbs up for, for red wine or whatever he said. But he basically endorsed red wine on the news. And the alcohol industry went crazy 
Because now, this wasn't an infomercial. This wasn't a commercial they'd paid for. This was the nightly news. It had just been on the news that red wine is good for you. And they went nuts. They sent press releases. They sent spokespeople. And they've been churning that story out for decades now. And you will see it coming around on Facebook, on Twitter, the, the old story that red wine is good for your heart. This whole principle was roundly dismissed about three years ago now by Cambridge University in the United Kingdom. They did an, an exhaustive survey of 600,000 people. And they came to the conclusion that any benefit that you get from drinking red wine, as in the antioxidants, is completely outweighed by the toxic effect of the alcohol. They concluded that there is no safe amount of alcohol. And also, you get exactly the same amount of antioxidants in a glass of grape juice as you do in a glass of red wine. But you don't see stories on Facebook, do you, promoting red grape juice? You know why? Because it wouldn't get any likes. Nobody would share it. Drinkers share and like the red wine story because it gives them plausible deniability. It gives them justification for what they're doing. So they like it and they share it and they go, yes, thumbs up. They get, oh, yes, finally. It's bullshit. And it was proved to be bullshit years ago. So what is the effect of alcohol on the heart? And the truth is it's not good because... And you can, you can quickly demonstrate this for yourself. Have you ever noticed after you drink uh, a lot of alcohol, maybe you go to sleep and you wake up in the night and you've got, obviously you feel a bit hungover, you're dehydrated, but also you may notice that your heart is pounding away in your chest. Like it's going crazy. And this is because alcohol raises the speed at which your heart beats. Now, Look, the fact is this powerful organ that we've got that pumps blood around our system comes with a life expectancy. It's like a light bulb. You know, they measure how long a light bulb will last by telling you roughly how many times you can turn it on and off. It's got so many actuations before it's going to die. And the same is true of your heart. It's only got so many beats in it. You just don't know how many you've got. So if you use them up quickly you're getting closer to the end game, if you see what I mean. We also know that alcohol increases the risk of heart attack. It increases the risk of stroke. And it also creates something called alcoholic cardiomyopathy. Now, of course, I'm not a doctor and I make it very clear in my videos that I'm not here to give medical advice. So I encourage you to do your own research on this. But there is something called alcoholic cardiomyopathy. Basically, the alcohol destroys and weakens the muscle of the heart. So it's no longer able to pump the uh, blood around the body at the sufficient rate that it's actually required. And so you may get uh, out of breath. You may not be able to climb a flight of stairs without stopping to have a rest because literally your, your, your heart cannot get the oxygen to your lungs and to your muscles at the rate that you require to do that exercise. And eventually it will lead to heart failure and you will die. So what I want to encourage you to do in this video is to ignore the nonsense because every single story that you have heard that alcohol in whatever form is good for your heart is a construct of the alcohol industry. The alcohol industry knows that its product kills its customers. Just the same way as Big Tobacco knew that its products killed its customers back in the 70s and 80s, and they lied about it. Big alcohol knows what is going on. And yet still, their marketing divisions propagate this story that red wine is good for your heart. Gin helps you lose weight. Whiskey does this. Vodka does that. It's all bullshit. You can experiment for yourself with this. Drink alcohol and see how your heart feels. It's not an improvement. So I hope that helps. I hope that gives some clarity on the situation. If you have questions, please ask. 
Don't forget to like and subscribe and comment below uh, on my YouTube channel. I'd love to hear from you. And if you're worried about your drinking, I encourage you to take action today, not tomorrow. Thank you. And it's the only drug on planet Earth that when you get a problem with it, they blame you and not the drug. That doesn't happen with any other substance. If you think about it, cigarettes. You tell someone you're addicted to cigarettes, they don't go, oh, you dirty smokeaholic. You're broken, weak-willed smokeaholic. You're going to be a smokeaholic for the rest of your life. They don't, they don't do that. They don't give you that label and say, well, that's it. You're broken forever now. I really consider this because it's different. It's it's different to anything you can find out there and it's it gives you real mental freedom from the clutches of alcohol i, I had an email about ooh, six months ago from a lady she said i was thinking about joining your course but then i've just seen that red wine is good for your heart how do you defend against that mr stop drinking expert <laughs> Yeah, it must be true. And I said, well, the, the defense against it is it's not true. And that's the biggest defense you can always have.